Brothers and sisters, we have a plan. This is Backwards James. And it's already Monday. And guys, I'm still getting revelations. And I still want to discuss them with you, my brothers and sisters. I love you, my brethren. Guys, if you could appreciate these things, if I was a genius, I certainly wouldn't be toiling the way that I am. And if I was exceptional, then I certainly would not be speaking to you today. The Lord Christ, the Lord Yahshua Yahweh, He has certainly given me revelation. So that light appears in darkness, and those who are common, of a common background, they can receive what is uncommon in themselves. Just as unlettered and ordinary were as were the prophets and the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, so we have turned up at this end of the age, knowing what we should not know, and uncovering the secrets of, age, of the ages. Things that have avoided our, our forefathers, and things that were a mystery to those that came before us, are being opened before us, my brother and sisters. Brothers and sisters, this is the time to pay attention. So, with all that pomp and circumstance, I'll go ahead and get to the point so guys today I want to talk about why the Lord Christ uses the wedding illustration why the wedding it's just an illustration so that we might understand uh, can you imagine trying to explain scenery to a person that is blind well we humans and we flesh creatures we cannot see into the spirit realm not unless we are sleeping or not unless the Lord has given us a vision which I do not deny the existence of these things. But while I am awake, unless the Christ actually hits me with a vision, where actually I have a waking dream, then I cannot see into the spirit realms. I cannot see into heaven. And for this reason, the Lord, what he does is he gives us illustrations so that we might understand. The illustration of the wedding and of the wedding reception so that there is a bride and a groom, and there are those who attend the wedding. And you are not invited to this wedding unless you have a wedding garment. Without the wedding garment, you do not get into the wedding. In fact, one guy actually did get in. But then the, 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 uh, the one who was overseeing the, the wedding approached him and said, Man, tell me, how have you got into the wedding without having on the proper garment? Bind him hand and foot and cast him out into the outer darkness. There is where his weeping and his, the gnashing of his teeth will be. Okay, so what the scriptures do, and uh, it's not an orthodox teaching, but what the scriptures do is they show you in exactly what order these wedding garments have already been um, distributed. Of course, Jesus Christ is the first one to receive of the wedding garments. It says that he was baptized, and then the dove came and sat down upon him. Now, if this were a wedding garment, it makes sense that Christ was first baptized. Because if you were going to a wedding, and you had a special garment that was made by a king, uh, this, these kingly garments, you would probably want to take a bath first. And likewise, none of us after Jesus Christ will receive these holy garments until first we have been cleansed by the living waters. The, light, the Lord says, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. So, if you are clean, and if you have already been cleansed and made ready, like Peter says, wash also my, my head and my hands. When the Lord says, well, you don't need to be bathed if you've already bathed. Nothing's more necessary than bathing your feet. So, the Christ washes our feet. This is when we learn the word. Of course, of course, Martha chose the lesser portion rather than sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his teaching, listening to his word and being endued, clothed with the very spirit of God. Martha chose the lesser portion in, in order to approve righteous before men by completing all these worthless works. Now, this is the key to understanding the, the, the garments, the white robes. 
because it says right there in Revelation chapter 19 verse 8 that the white robes mean the righteous deeds of the holy ones. Now since Acts of Apostles, since the first century Christians, the world has been glutted with the good deeds of the church. But the good deeds of the church are as filthy rags before the Lord. Filthy rags are what the good deeds of the church have been. Uh, per Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Okay? Sure, the churches are preaching the word. They're translating Bibles. They're, they're running food drives. They're doing all these good works. But their, their good works are as filthy rags. Their good works pale in comparison to the miracles, my brethren. Which one of them opened the eyes of the blind? Which one of them made the, the lame man walk? Which one of them raised the dead? Which one of them walked on water? Which one of them spoke in, t in tongues of fire? It has not been seen since the days of the apostles of Jesus. Okay, and the reason for that is it just simply wasn't time. The, the uh, distribution of these white robes goes like this. God has given the, the seal, okay, to Christ. He has sealed the Christ with his approval. This is the crown of the Christ. There's a movie, um, Madagascar, the very first Madagascar. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But uh, as a gag, the antagonist lion, he crowns Alex the lion with this this hat of fruit and it's his crown now whoever writes this stuff understands okay because the crown that jesus christ received are in fact the fruits he was glorified and he was beautified just like aaron and aaron's sons were glorified and beautified by the turban and the white linen and the sash and the golden ephod and all the stones and all the pomp and circumstance all the royal attire okay well what royal attire did Jesus Christ have they were in fact the miracles okay so then God distributes the crown to Christ Christ goes and is circumcised in his flesh and then sends the promised Holy Spirit down on the upper room of the 120 that were praying in one accord. They received the white garments. And this was also manifest by none other than the powerful works. There's no white robe that you, know, that you literally see on earth. If you were in heaven and you could see into the realms of heaven just by opening your eyes, then yeah, you would see white robes. But the white robes are a spiritual illustration for us to understand that they have been clothed with power. Go to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. He says, go and wait in the city until, you are, until I go and... And the, the Father sin, sends what is promised. Until I go and send what was promised by the Father, and you are clothed with power. Okay, so the, the crown that the Christ received is then also followed up by the, the white garments. Now this is the very same thing that happens in Revelation chapter 7. Um, Revelation chapter, uh, the sixth seal is open. The angel says, um, Let's not to harm the four corners with the four winds until first we have sealed our our, our brethren, until we have sealed the servants of God uh, in their foreheads. Now, this is when they received their crown, just as Christ received his crown after being washed, after being baptized, the 144,000 received their crown. They then walk the same as Christ walked, and they are circumcised in their flesh. At Revelation chapter 11, 7, when the wild beast conquers and kills them. They go to the Father, and then who receives the white robes? Just as Christ was circumcised in his flesh and sent the promise from the Father at Pentecost, when the 144,000, when the two witnesses get conquered and killed, the great crowd receives their robes. Okay? It's a distribution. Because, again, you're not invited to the wedding unless you've got these special robes. This 
is a royal wedding, so that not just the bride and the groom and the bridal party have robes, even the guests have robes. And people don't get married this way. Okay, the invitation is the robe itself. So those putting it, faith in the works of Jesus, even, at, even unto death, received of the white robes after Christ had died and been raised up. In the same way, those putting faith in the two witnesses who have received crowns from the Father, they have been sealed in their foreheads. Once they do their walk and once they are conquered and killed and raised up, why those putting faith in their works receive their white robes. And here is the wedding. Here is the illustration. Now the white Robes mean righteous deeds. So the great crowd isn't going to just be running fundraisers anymore. They're not going to be doing the local food houses and the, um, the distribution to tables. Now they're going to be healing the sick. Now they're going to be making the lame walk and raising the dead. Okay? This is what the great crowd does. These are their righteous deeds. No one is allowed into the house of the Father unless they can do miracles. You cannot stand in the fiery flame unless you have miracles. Unless God himself has overshadowed you like he did for Abraham, like he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? So if you have powers and if you can do miracles, now you have become a son of God. Now the blood of Christ has washed you clean and you are ready to give off fruit. Thus, the crown of fruits that was used to make fun of Alex the Lion in Madagascar. He has a crown of fruits because you will know them by their fruits. Many will rove around in the earth claiming that, yes, Christ has come. Yes, they are the chosen ones. Follow me. Follow me. No, 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 no. You will verify them by their fruits. Paul says, I don't care what a man says. Let me see his power. Okay? So, there's not going to be any question about who is who once the crowns come. Once we get crowned in our foreheads, we will show and prove who's who. We will show and prove who the Lord has chosen for his holy priesthood. Okay? Because we will do works of power. We will do signs and portents. We will, uh, what does it say? in Daniel. We will perform exploits. We will bring understanding to the many. This is about to be fulfilled, my brothers and sisters. What are we waiting for at this point? We're waiting for the rapture, which must also wait for the economic crash, which also must wait for the World War Three. okay? So, you know, you're ready for the rapture? Well, are you ready for World War Three? Are you ready for the economic down downturn and the collapse? Okay, but, and again, here's another piece of that revelation that the Lord's just been overwhelming me for the, the past weekend. And thank you, amen, Jesus. Um, I love it. Um, he sent me revelation about do not harm the olive oil and the wine. Do not harm the olive oil and the, the wine. The third seal. Okay, so the olive oil and the wine represent Elijah and Elisha. Okay, the olive oil is the aspect of the oil. See, uh, Elijah goes up, Elisha receives, you see. Wine makes the heart of men rejoice. This is in Proverbs. Wine makes the heart of man rejoice. You see, the double portion, the fruits of, of our labor. This is the wine. Elijah, Elisha. So do not harm the olive oil and the wine. Do not harm the bride or the bridesmaids. Do not harm the 144,000 and do not harm the great crowd. Do not harm those who are already sealed as to those who must now put faith in the works of those who have been sealed. Okay, we're not going to be harmed by, by the economic downturn if we don't panic. If you run out worrying about the very things that Christ told you not to worry about, well, then you're sure you're going to be harmed by the third seal. What did Christ tell you? He said, do not worry about what you are to eat and what you are to drink and what you are to put on. Do not be in anxious suspense regarding these things. The Lord knows that you need these things. First, seek the kingdom 
and his righteousness. Now, what is his righteousness? The righteous deeds of the holy ones. Why, this is symbolized by the white robes. So don't seek foods, food and drink. Don't, don't seek the, uh, the table of flesh. Seek the table of the Lord. Seek the righteousness of the Lord. Seek the Lord your righteousness. And become and receive the name Yahushurun, Jeshurun. It means the Lord is our righteousness. Jehovah is our righteousness. Okay? When the, the economic uh, downturn happens and the World War War pops up, the World War Three pops up, rather than acting like the world, rejoice and lift up your eyes and see that your Lord is near, the day is near, and, and your, your deliverance has come. Okay, the ones that can see what is invisible, they will react in a very positive way. They will receive crowns of glory. They will receive powers and grace from God, white robes and invitations to the wedding of the Lamb. But those who do not recognize that the Lord has come, those who do not have the eyes of faith, they will inherit doubt and confusion and anger and great travail and great tribulation. And even them... They that are hard-hearted, they have a choice between life and death. If they are hard-hearted unto death, they will listen to everything the devil says. Okay? But even those who get left behind have a choice. You can either believe what is good, or you can believe the lies, the evil, and accept the fact that Belial now heals, and the devil uh, makes the lame walk, and the devil raises the dead. This is what the Pharisees did. They saw Jesus' good works, and they said, oh, look, he's a devil and a demon. But be careful and beware, because these are the very same ones that sinned against the Spirit. If you doubt what is good, you will not receive anything from the, from the person of Jehovah. So I'm getting kind of long on my break. I'm going to go ahead, go back to work. And I love you guys, and, and I cherish these little uh, sessions. So um, have a great week.